Unit 3, Presentation 6, Summary of Achievements. Um, when the person has been in prison for quite a while, they will often have a stack of certificates from programs and courses they have participated in. The first thing for them to do is to prepare a list of those programs. It could be um, chronological or it could be grouped by subject matter, but it's a way of getting an, a sense of what's entailed in that stack of certificates without having to go through each and every one. I'm suggesting that for the copy of the parole packet, which goes to the parole commission itself, there isn't a need to include copies of the certificates. There is a need to include the list of the certificates and a note at the bottom of the list of the certificates that the person will have all of them with them at the parole hearing should the um, parole commissioners or the hearing officer wish to check what's there. Um, this is just a way of keeping the parole packet itself slimmer um, and it also means there's less photocopying and mailing have to, having to be done in terms of the person mailing the stuff out of the prison to a parole advocate and then it being mailed on or another copy being made and it ma mailed on to the parole commission. However, others have suggested that the best idea is that a copy of everything goes to the parole commission. I've heard it argued both ways um, and so... I'll, I'll leave it up to particular pairings to figure out how they want to do that. So aside from things that are documented by certificates, think of any other achievements that can be documented. For example, if the person's in a prison college program, they can usually get hold of a printout of their latest transcript. So it's just going to show their GPA and all the classes that they have taken. That's great to include. Um, they should also have work evaluations from whatever their job in the prison is and some of those evaluations will have um, written comments of the, on them and particularly good stuff definitely include and also you can include if over a period of time there's been growth and improvement and and that series of work evaluation documents that growth and improvement then you could include them and and use that as um, the argument that this person is a good candidate for parole because they've matured and they've gotten their act together at work. Um, so particularly when there's a lot of work evaluations, I think the best thing to do is get a yellow highlighter or, or some bright highlighter and go through and run a highlighter over the relevant points. So if there's check boxes and it's um, all the check marks relate to um, excellent, then highlight the word excellent and the check boxes so that the person who's flicking through can quickly pick out what the relevant information on all that paper is. Also, what comes towards the end of the pro packet is letters of recommendation. And again, just like with the certificates, it's important to write a list of the letters of recommendation. Now that could that list could potentially go in the content section of the parole packet. Um, I think it's helpful if it's a fairly big parole packet to have a list of the letters right in front of the letters themselves as well, or as an alternative to in the content section. These letters can come from um, institutional staff. They can come from people running programs in the prison, for example, uh, a professor in a college program might write a letter for a student. Um, they could come from, say, a chaplain in respect of someone who is uh, helping in church services. They could come from other inmates who have particular points or, or they've seen particular things in that person that's, that's worth documenting and noting and are relevant to their readiness for parole. Uh, they could come from family members who've seen growth in the person and they could come from other people on the outside. Everybody's set of letters of recommendation is unique. The key thing about those letters is that they begin by explaining the relationship between the writer and the person seeking parole. How does that writer know that person and how are they in a position to give relevant information to the parole commission? 
and then it should go on to describe the positive things that the writer has knowledge or experience of. And by that, we mean all the things that go to the question of whether the person is a good candidate for parole or not. Thank you.